Hey everyone, in this video we will be going through how to create a structured mesh for a rectangular domain defined by five points. This may sound super boring, but this particular mesh will be used for something pretty awesome in one of my future videos. I'm going to zoom through a couple of the basics of the structured slash transfinite mesh from my other video, so watch that if you want a slower version of the basics here. Now I'm starting with the points already defined here. You can see that the bottom is at 0, 0, this guy's at 0, 1, this guy's at 0, 2, this guy's at 4, 2, and this guy's at... Uh, four zero, and so this looks similar to the other rectangle that we had from before, except that we have an extra point on the left-hand side right here. Now, the first thing that we need to do is add those straight lines. I'm going to go into Add Straight Line. I'm going to select all these and connect them up like this. And the lines don't look straight, but I can. It's just because I need to press Control Z. Now they're straight. And so that defines our outer domain. Press Q to abort. I'm going to make a plane surface. It says select the surface boundary. The whole thing gets selected. We press E, and it makes a surface out of the whole thing. Even though we have an extra point in here, it's defining a plane surface from the entire uh, from the entire enclosed region from these lines. And so for my other video, if you recall, the next step is to go into physical groups, and we want to add in lines which set the uh, markers for the boundary conditions. So, and so this is why I've added two sections on the left hand side. Imagine that you have outflow on the right hand side. So this whole boundary is just outflow of a fluid. The top and the bottom can still be walls, for example. So no fluid is passing through the walls. But now on, on this side, let's say that instead of having just a single inlet, you wanted to have a wall and then an inlet on one portion of it. So this is what we can do now. And so I'll set these two as top and bottom. So I just write I'll just write it as top bottom and we'll set that uh, okay and then this one we can still call outlet and these are arbitrary names you can call them whatever you like uh, you just have to make sure that's consistent with your configuration file in SU2 if you're running it in SU2 or whatever program you're running it in and then here let's just call this one we'll just call this one wall and then we can call this guy here we'll say this is where the inlet is and so we'll call that inlet and so now that's why we have these two separate uh, lines here because we can have two separate boundary conditions. Now we'll press Q to abort so we get out of that and now the next step is to go in and make our uh, transfinite mesh. So we're going to mesh here and we're going to go into define into transfinite and we want to define this as the surface. So we're going to select surface here and recall that for a transfinite mesh or a structured mesh you have to define the surface by clicking on the plane surface and then you can only select four points and so we're going to select this whole domain here so we're going to select this point here this point here, this point here, and this point here. We're not selecting this point here. So we'll press E and then Q to abort. Now in order to complete the mesh, we need to define the uh, number of points along each of the boundaries. So I'm gonna select transfinite and then the line. And the top and bottom boundaries, we can keep the same. So I'll just select those two and we'll keep those at whatever they were before, like 20 is fine. Press E to set those. Now I'm gonna set these boundaries before I set this boundary. Remember that the rightmost boundary has to have the same number of points slash cells as the leftmost boundary. But now we have to define each of these two, this guy and this guy separately. And so I'm going to set this guy first. We can send them to the same size, but I just have to define them separately. So I'm gonna set this guy to uh, five points. And we can also set this one to five points. So I'm gonna specify both of those at the same time, press E. Now both of these have five points and five points. This guy you would say, oh, well then I'll just put 10 points. But you have to be careful because now when I say five points, I mean that there are four cells, right? There are points minus one cells. So there's four cells here, there's four cells here. That means on this side there has to be four plus four, eight cells, and for uh, the, the number of points is number of cells plus one. So for eight cells there are nine points. And so to set the right hand boundary we have to select nine. We'll select this boundary here, press E, and then we'll press Q to abort that. And before we mesh we have to recombine. So we'll click recombine, select the surfaces, we select the surface, and we press E, Q, and then we can go to 2D, and you can see we end up with the transfinite or structured mesh. Uh, between this point and this point, we have one, two, three, four cells, one, two, three, four cells, and this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cells, so that makes sense. So what's different between this mesh and the one that we created in the other video with just four points defining the rectangle? The difference between the two is that I can define two separate boundary conditions along this left wall right here. Now one of the other benefits of having uh, these two separate regions here is that we can change the number of cells or points along each of these lines. So let's go into geometry, edit the file, I'm going to delete uh, we don't need to get rid of the top and bottom lines. We'll keep those the same, but I'm going to delete this other stuff here. 
press control S to save it and we'll reload it. And now, so these are still defined with 20 points, uh, but I'm going to do a line. And now on this one, let's say we want to set five points. So we'll do five, press E. And then on this one, let's do 10 instead. So we'll do 10 points, press E. So five points, that's four cells. 10 points, that's nine cells. Nine cells plus four cells is 13 cells on this side. 13 cells is the same as 14 points. So we'll do 14 and we'll set that to that one, E, and then we'll press Q to abort. We need to recombine, so we'll click that, press E, abort, and then we'll do 2D. So now you can see that we still have the same number of cells on the left and the right hand side and the same number of cells on the top and the bottom, but the lines are no longer horizontal uh, just because we have more we have more points in this lower half and so in order to get to the same number of points on this side these have to be kind of at an upward slope but this might not be exactly what you wanted so let's say that you wanted just to have a higher uh, grid density in this region all the way across but to have these lines as horizontal and have a lower grid density up here so the way that we can do this is to split this domain this single plane surface into two separate plane surfaces because remember for the transfinite mesh you have to have four bounding points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a point on this side across from this one and we'll select two separate domains. So now I've just updated the file and I've, I've pulled everything back, deleted all the extra stuff and we've just gone back to points and lines now. And now I've added in that extra point on the right hand side. So this is technically a six point rectangle now or six point double rectangle. Uh, and so now I've drawn a line in between these two points right here because we're trying to define a higher grid density down here and a lower uh, grid density up here. So now the next thing that we need to do is still define plane surfaces. So I select this, but it doesn't complete the loop because it doesn't know if it wants, if I want to continue going around here, but I only want this one, this to be a single one. So I'll press E. And then I also want this and this to be a single plane surface, press E and then press Q. Now I still need to define the boundary conditions here. So we go into physical groups, add and align. Again, I'm going to say, that these are both the top, uh, top, bottom, that's fine. This now I can define this and this as outlet still. We'll call this guy the wall, same as before, and then this guy the inlet. And we don't need to define anything for the middle one because this is just to specify our grid, but this is we don't need any boundary conditions on this because this is technically in the interior of the domain for the particular problem I'm showing as an example here. So we'll press uh, Q to abort that. Next step is to get into the meshing. So we'll just close the geometry portion of this and go into mesh. And in transfinite, we need to define these surfaces again. So we'll click on surface. Now we have two separate surfaces. So the first one is this guy with these four bounding points. So we'll do that press E. Then we need this one with these four bounding points, like so, press E, close out, press Q. Now we can finally specify the number of points for each of these, so I'm going to click on line. Uh, these ones I'm going to do all the same, because these all need to be the same, and so I'll just set these again to something like 20 points, and whoops, I want to click in here, press E, and now this one here, uh, let's just say we wanted to keep that at five and this one here is now also going to be five and so we can press E and now this one I want to be 10 and I also want this one to be 10 and so we'll press E and now we need to recombine so we'll click this guy recombine uh, this guy recombine now we'll press 2D and now you can see that we have a uh, it's a little it's a little hard to tell just because I didn't make the numbers different enough but you can see that there's four cells here and then there's nine cells here uh, and so we have two different regions one with a with a higher density mesh and one with a lower density mesh the final step is to save the file out as the mesh file so we'll go to file save as and i'll save it out as a the mesh file that su2 uses which is su2 and it'll guess from the extension press save save all okay the mesh is now saved. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you'll see why this mesh is useful in one of my future videos where I'll be using this type of mesh for a CFD simulation using uh, SU2. Uh, so thanks for watching.